one of my Amiga 500s has always been acting strange, as in random crashes and strange disk drive behavior, which is what swayed my decision to get the second Amiga 500 as a backup. At some point, once my project room, my little lab, is made up and set up properly, I do wish to investigate further what the issues are and just iron them out. But for now, I bought a diagnostic ROM version 1.2.1 from eBay. I know very little about it, actually I know nothing about it, and I will explore it in this video. PCBWay have now become a one-stop solution. Other than doing high-quality PCB boards, they now do CNC services as well as 3D printing. If, like myself, you're into doing electronics projects and require PCBs, then do check out their services on their website. Okay, so I've shifted from downstairs up here into the attic, into my project room. And um, yeah, you'll have seen that from the posts if you've been following me on Mastodon or Twitter or Facebook or even YouTube posts. You know, I got a few places where I post uh, updates. Uh, and here, what I'm going to do, yeah, you've seen like the, the newer Amiga and the one I have. The newer Amiga works perfectly fine. This one has a few issues. It just keeps crashing for some reason, like intermittent crashing. Okay, so today I'm just going to explore diagnostic options and, you know, go through the insides of the Amiga the info on that. Basically, I've got myself a diagram here and also I, the um, Advanced Amiga Analyzer 2.0 by Wilcom. This is from like early, early to mid 90s. I've used this in the past. One I haven't used, which I came across when looking around for the diagram, was Amiga Test Kit 1.18 by Care Fraser. Um, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but Care um, Fraser is the person who did the Flash Floppy, who, who's done Flash Floppy and many other things. Okay, so today's video will be about, you know, checking the diagnostic options and also looking at the Amiga closely, what's inside of it. So I have this um, diagram or diagnostic ROM, which I got from eBay. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's by John Hurdle. So I haven't actually tried this or seen it used or anything. So this is my first time. Right, so before we continue in the diagnostic ROM and so forth, I'm going to go through, you know, a little bit of what's going on on this board. Or I just want to know the context of what's going on. So let's start with this dude here. Now this big beefy dude is the actual CPU itself. It's a Motorola 68000 processor. And that is using this crystal oscillating at seven megahertz. Now right next to it is the ROM chip, the Kickstart ROM. A lot of you will know this because you're gonna be replacing your Kickstart ROMs to you know, later versions. At the moment I've got 1.3 here because you know it's just a stock Amiga 500. I wanna keep it that way. Okay, so let's move all the way up here to these two dudes here. These are CIA chips. You have two here, A and B. Uh, the odd CIA and the even CIA. The chip, its chips themselves are identical. You can actually swap them over. But these are complex interface adapter chips, CIA, which are for per peripheral interfacing. <laughs> I struggle with that word, peripheral. Peripheral interfacing. So everything which connects to the ports at the back here, the serial, the parallel, the mouse, joystick, fluffy, these handle those, all the ports and the input and output and so forth. So the even CIA here, the difference between them, the even is for the serial port control or the serial control and some parallel port functions and also the fluffy drives. Now the odd one here is again some parallel port controls, some fluffy controls as well and you know the joystick and mouse controls. Now let's move a little lower here to Paula. Now Paula chip is, of course, one of my favorite chips. But it's difficult to call it my favorite chip because in, a se in essence, all these custom chips work in a harmony together. So it's hard to single out on any one of them. But of course, um, Paula controls the audio. So of course, audio. The four 8-bit PCM sound sample channels. It also controls the audio logic well, it's basically the interrupt controller of the entire machine. You know, the floppy drive controller and other things such as serial input and output, as well as some mouse and joystick controls. So as you see what I mean, it, you know, all these chips do a little bit of different things, not just like one single chip. It's not like this is strictly the audio chip or the sound chip or that's strictly, you know, the input output chip and, you know, so forth. It's like they do a little bit of everything each. 
But I want to push on this point with regards to audio on the Amiga. Many artists use wavetable synthesis for creating chiptunes. And a lot of people think that that's like, oh, it's cheating because it's using samples and not synthesis. Actually, it's not. It's classed as, wavetable is classed as synthesis. And, you know, I explained this a bit more in my um, model synthesizer <laughs> um, review. You know, there are PWM audio channels. Anyway, the Amiga actually does have FM synthesis capabilities, which are indeed used in many games. Okay, before we get on a full-on geek out with regards to Paula, uh, because I'm an audio person and I cannot help myself, we will move on to Gary, which is short for Gatorade. Basically deals with the bus control and certain floppy drive functions. In the Amiga 600 and 1200, by the way, Gary is replaced with Gale, which on top of doing all this, you know, controls the PCMCA and the ID88 interface and all that. Now let's move all the way over there near the video port and say hello to Denise. <laughs> Denise is basically the graphics chip. It handles the video output, the screen modes, resolution, sprites, you know, this basically deals with, you know, like when you connect an external gen lock or anything video related attached to the computer, Denise deals with that, the video basically. Now all the way down here, we move on to these four guys. Now these, this is a 512K of chip RAM. You can actually solder on additional chips here to create one megabyte of chip ROM. Or alternatively, moving a little over here, you can just add a RAM expansion, a 512K RAM expansion, which is slow RAM. And these chips here control that. These two chips here, I believe they're, you know, they deal with these RAM chips, they're the buffer or something like this. Now, last but not least, and there's a reason why I showed you this last, is because this does a lot in the Amiga. I'd probably go as far as calling it the heart of the Amiga if you were to, mm, I don't know, if you were to look at the heart literally, like it controls the blood flow around the body, this controls the memory around the chips. Basically, Fat Agnes is, well, the older one was just Agnes, and that is an OCS. Now this seems to be an ECS, which is, yeah, Fat Agnes. Now this chip is the central controller of the Amiga, the DMA or Direct Memory Access Controller. It controls the memory access of the custom chips, like, you know, as I said, the heart of the Amiga. It also deals with some graphics and video as well, such as, you know, Blitter and Copper, it contains them. They are both our two coprocessors. Blitter is basically a coprocessor within the Agnes chip, which deals with drawing lines or blocks on the screen. The Copper, well, basically, copper stands for coprocessor, not the metal, is <laughs> the other coprocessor in, on the, in this chip or in the Amiga. You know, it's a general purpose one, but can amongst other things control the graphics, you know, like moving sprites, and, you know, the play fields and things like this, and also changes color palettes, and as well as even controlling the audio. So, you know, it just decides which goes where, what does what, and all that stuff. So it frees a lot from the CPU itself giving a much faster machine, an efficient running one, and multitasking and so forth. And over here we have the audio filter circuitry, which is, just looks like it's like an op-amp circuit there. And also we have, hey, look what this little friend is. Familiar friend from way back, <laughs> old school. Triple five timer, and that's the reset circuit. I remember this very well because I was fixing it in the Amiga 1200, uh, sorry, the Amiga 600. Oh goodness, that was quite a journey. <laughs> you can watch the video here if you like. There we go. Our friend, the 555 timer. So many memories from this from back in the college days. <laughs> I miss college days, actually. Electronics in college, I miss the building even. It was actually my favorite building, but sadly the building is actually gone now and been 
replaced by car park. <laughs> depressing. I kind of walk past there. Art work number. Well, it definitely is a work of art. It's like all these custom chips and everything just work together like a symphony. So beautifully. So basically that is about it in a nutshell. I don't want to go into too much detail about each of these because, you know, I, I can't help it. I'll end up being here all day and all night just talking about stuff like this. So yeah, this is basically, you know, what we're dealing with here. All these little parts. Why the f*** do things just go walk up? They just vanish. I put my um, IC extractor somewhere. It's just like, literally it's got legs. It's here, right in front of my face. <laughs> it teleports as well. It's proof. <laughs> so let's connect this Amiga up to that screen instead and see what it says to us. Okay, so let's turn this on. And just so flashy. <laughs> now just bear in mind that this screen is absolutely terrible. It's just a it's just a replacement. Hold on. Doing ROM checksum test. 64k blocks, green okay, red failed. Okay, let's go through the uh, sample waveform test. Okay, well, that all works fine. I mean the f yeah, that's fine anyway. Plus test module. Okay, that's all fine. Okay, so two. Have this test. Okay, brilliant. RGB test. Oops. Keep pressing. Port test, parallel port. Okay, that's obviously not gonna work. Because there's no loop, I don't have any loopback connected. Drive test. That's kind of cool, that. You can press the key to step the, um, the head in and out. So it's got 83 tracks right, so why did it only like write on 79? I mean, probably a naive question, but no question's a stupid question. No, they could write on more. Here's one sticky key on this. the other one buttons and keys at boot though that one I think sometimes had a stuck button um, I noticed one of the keys did not have a spring in it so I've just like replaced it with a spring so let's audio tests again memory test See, I've removed the diagram and reinserted the Kickstart ROM 1.3. It didn't come up with any fault or anything wrong, but saying that 80 to 90 percent of the time this Amiga is working fine. It it was much worse before I recapped and restored it. You know that seemed to get rid of most of the issues, but there are still a few niggles left. Could be an issue with one of the CIAs or you know anything like this. I may try to swap them with a second Amiga actually to see if there's any change in behavior in each of the Amiga 500s. 
Another floppy drive needs seeing do on this machine because it keeps detecting disk insertion and ejection randomly. I'm figuring the disk, sorry, the detection switch needs a good contact clean. So time to get the dioxide out. Anyway, let's move on to Advanced Amiga Analyzer 2.0. Ah, there you go. You see, it thinks I've ejected the disk when I haven't even touched the drive. And it seems to react and respond when I tap on the Amiga. See, you hear that? Definitely seems to be something up with the switch and the contacts. Okay, so here it is, and as you can see, the initial one is port testing, the mouse testing, and it tells you the 5 volt in the ground. Okay, and the second one, of course, I have my trusty zipstick connected. Actually, oh, it's Rich's zipstick. <laughs> yeah, it is Rich's one. I can tell whose zipstick's who by the fire button, <laughs> so can he. <laughs> So I cannot sneak and say the better one's mine, <laughs> but I need to have a look at some my zipsticks need to, looking at. I've got quite a few. <laughs> it doesn't have fire two, but it's fire zero, fire one, and fire two. So you can, three fire buttons you can do on the Amiga. Why do many of these games and why do jo joystick creators do not utilize this? You can even do it on C64. I've never understood this. Why do they just do one fire button for this? I could alleviate a lot of the Amiga's problems having just like a more fire buttons. Parallel port, we have loop back here. As you can see, the pins connected back and forth to others. You can you, know, you can create one yourself or you can find one. I think I'm going to try and find, so find these. Uh, one for the serial as well because I need these. I've got quite a few Amigas. Uh, Amiga computers and I want to get them up to scratch. I mean I cannot do it all now because my workbench is not set up exactly. As you can see here I'm still faffing around with um, electronics projects. I'm actually faffing around with a certain project which I'm working on and yeah I only have this for the time being and it's not the most ideal for like fixing and repairing or anything but you know for now it's a cozy little space, which will do <laughs> until, you know, the rest of this room is um, fixed and done. I've done half of this room, the other half needs doing. So here you have a memory test, and it seems to be like a basic memory test. Um, you run the test and it just checks through the blocks from this address to this. And you can see the current address is checking. Thing is with this, it just keeps going and going until you press end. <laughs> so it's almost like relying on you rather than, I mean, yeah, it says the error is found. But rather than like informing you, it just keeps going. So if you don't know that, you could just be working on something else and thinking that this is taking ages, but it's not. So it's a little thingy. And same with the um, the disk, the disk check. It goes through, you know, if you put a good disk in, it goes through all the drives which you have here. And you just put a, a fully function disk in and it should come up with. Anyway, so as you can see there, it's doing a read and write test. And as you can see, it just, once it's finished, it just keeps going and going until you do the end test. And it just says ended. So it kind of like, rather than telling you, it just says pass one, which to be honest, I'd rather it give me a bit more <laughs> information about that. So that's disks, you go to video, there's not really any tests here, it just gives you the information uh, on the video part and the pinouts and everything. So you can see here you have your vertical sync, horizontal sync, and C sync, and you know, so forth. Okay, you red, green, blue, clock signals, and ground, and so forth, and power. So that's basically it, <laughs> you know. Um, and you have the audio here, you can test that. Again, it's just like a cycling test. It's up to you to listen to it and have a look if there's anything wrong. It goes through each channel here, each audio channel of Paula, and it just keeps going until you press the end test, but it's all fine. Anyway, um, config, let's go to that. I don't think this has any tests. It's just, it just gives you information about your, I mean, there's no tests or no, nothing you can change, no configuration changing, but it tells you what you have. Like it tells you information about your Amiga. So it's got the ECS, yeah, I was right, ECS 512K, um, Agnes. Denise is the old one. 
CPU is 68,000 of course, FPU it doesn't have any um, displays PAL and the ROM version here. Um, here it tells you what the maximum memory is, so it's 504 plus 1 meg, you know, in total. Don't have any expansion boards here, which would have been here. That's pretty much it here for this. Amiga test kit 1.18 here uh, by Carefraser. Carefraser is the guy who does the flash floppy. Uh, on for the Gotek and also you know I remember buying a ROM switcher from him quite a few years ago. So let's take that out. Let's see blank disk and try carefree Fraser's Amiga test. Okay, I like that. No frills, just go straight into it um, with no workbench loading or anything like this. Right, so let's look at this. Amiga Test Kit 1.8 by Care Fraser. Okay, I like the setout already. Um, it tells you on the front page what the 68,000 OCS PAL 50 Hz ROM, what ROM it is, and so forth. Um, the Git, his GitHub memory test. Okay, so it seems total memory detected good. So we need to know chip. 5 meg, uh, 5 megawatts, 500k, uh, slow 500k, again, totaling one, test all memory list, test memory regions, oh god, okay, so this just goes through, okay, so you just, you can actually test a specific region of memory, if you suspect it or anything like this, or for whatever other reason, that's good, direct memory scan ignores kickstart, okay, that's good, okay, so that's good, good memory tester, Keyboard, of course, to test your keyboard. <laughs> That's literally everything. That's really good, actually. I like this. Um... So, floppy drive tests. Okay, signal test, retest. Ah, head calibration. Okay, that's good because I have a huge pile of floppy drives, as you can see here waiting to be tested. Some of these are from like, you know, back in the day, I've, I had them in a box in the attic amongst my other Amiga stuff from back in the day. Um, I found more of it, thankfully, and I found more discs from back in the day as well that I had, which I thought I'd sold off and along with the setup. But yeah, along came some of these floppy drives, but I need to test them all and that's for another video because it's going to be too much for this. But yeah. Once I get my workbench set up properly, I'll do that. So as you can see there, head calibration test, uh, which is really good. Let's have a look at that. Because I may need that for some of these floppy drives. Right, it says 11 out of 11, okay. The thing, the thing is with this, is that this disk has been created using this drive. So you need to, you know, have a disk. It's basically um, aligning the disk heads. It's very... Uh, essentially the same concept as your tape azimuth you know you have a tape deck and you adjust the azimuth on that to get the you know the tape alignment the head alignment so basically the, the disc head alignment here I can see you can check throughout the disc you can check cylinder 0 I can check cylinder 40 which is right in the center of the disc in the middle of the disc and the end of the disc cylinder 79 so you can, you know, that's perfect. I love that. I'm gonna make good use of that when it's when I. Brilliant! It's got everything you need for that. So let's out of here. And the controller ports again. You're gonna need that loopback thing. Uh, actually, no. This is the um, thingy controller ports, isn't it? So you got mouse, left mouse button. Don't have middle, right mouse button works. Again, joystick testing. Button one <laughs> doesn't have button two, three. Up down. I'm trying. Six. Let's see what video tests this have. RGB gradients. Okay, good. Fantastic. Um, pixel checkboard static. Okay, let's check board. Checkboard alternating. Let's check um, audio. Nice. Spice it up by gesture sanity. Got a cool track on here as well. Yes. 
sign square, uh, F6 to filter, test that, um, all channels on off, so individual channels. Nice way to test, love this. Okay, so we've got that, let's check the CIA chipset, up on CIA precision timers. Pass that test, fantastic. Um, F2. This allows arbitrary configuration of CI port pins. This may damage hardware or crash the system if the pins are in use. Continue with care. Okay, well, this is this pins are not in use. Ooh, hold on, actually. I have a mouse adapter. As you can see here, very happily sitting there, the Jerry Plus. So I will actually I'll unplug that and then do it, so I don't want anything in use. So let's turn off the Amiga, unplug the Jerry adapter completely. Thankfully you can run the disc without need of a mouse. Okay, so that's the game port and all that stuff. Basically this sends a signal into the pins and um, you know, if there's anything connected, like for example the um, the Jerry adapter or anything like this, you can actually mess it up or mess the CIAs up. This is just testing the CIA chip, so you need to like remove everything. Um, as you see here, if you look at the LED, press F7, that's sending pulses into the LED. I'm not sure if you can see that properly, so I'll cover this um, for the light to be out. Let's press F7 again. Output the zero, like this. Output the one, like this. And then if you press that and you saw it trigger, like one zero one zero, as you can see there, I'm not sure if the camera is showing this flickering or not, but it's flickering really fast. You can just test the parallel port there, and each pin, serial port there, again different pins, the floppy port pins, the motor and you know select and all sorts. So this is, yeah, this is testing in grid depth all the CIA port, just make sure you know what you're doing when you go into this. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, just skip it. Because you can da you can do some damage with this. Okay, I don't have an RTC, um, real-time clock, so non-detected. Um, serial parallel. Loopback serial test, okay, it requires dongle, I need to get these dongles. Uh, loopback uh, sorry, uh, dongle build guide. Oh, actually, that's good. I can build my own. Okay, so pins 1 to 10. I might just do this. I'll get some... Screw it, I'll go build my own if I can't find any online that's cheap. It's just ports are, you know, the standard serial parallel ports. So yeah, I'll do that. Right, so LED plus 1 kilo ohm. Okay, fair enough. Good. It isn't good that the power pins are operational. Nice. So this... Is a, you know I really like actually I'd say a little more than the diagram I like the um, set out of this one a little bit better but I have to say the di diagram would probably have its advantage so let's say for example you have a memory issue on your computer and one of the lines is severed you know it'll green screen or something like this or a memory controller has an issue so it's got something to do with the memory the green the green screen thing but you won't be able to load anything or load any of these software ones so i think i'm not sure i've not tried it i do have one motherboard um omega 501 which is back in the old place which i still need to kind of go do and visit i haven't visited the old place for like since november you know, so it's been a long time and I've been really needing some things for some projects which I need to do over here for the channel and so forth. So yeah, I'm we're about to actually go there this week. In fact, when this video is out, I probably would have been back by then, so everything would be done. But yeah, I haven't tested the diagram on a uh, diagram here <laughs> on uh, a green screening Amiga, but I'm gonna bring the motherboard, the green screens and the rest of the goodies and so forth. I just want to get all my Amiga systems, you know, all up to scratch, all sorted. So yeah, do expect future videos, maybe quite 
late in future depends on how things are with this uh, room and also how things are with other projects because once I get into stuck into one thing I really get into it so and, and everything else kind of like takes a back seat so I let myself flow here it depends what I do but anyway I'll bring all this cool stuff okay so there we have it we have the diagnostic options here and we have information about what all the chips are inside my beauty of a favorite machine, the Amiga. And that's not like just the Amiga 500 or just a specific model, I just love the Amiga. All models. <laughs> but my favorite models are of course the Amiga 1200, the Amiga 500. You know, those two, I love them. This part of the song just makes me melt inside, just very slightly. Well done, Alistair Brimble. If you have a favorite diagnostic tool or diagnostic disc which you use, then let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you liked any of these, which one of these did you like best and why? Let me know. Yeah, if there's any out there which I'm missing, because I'm sure there's loads there. Yes. As I said, comment and let me know. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to check out my other videos because I have loads. <laughs> I've got cover lots of things, not just the Amiga. I cover hi-fis and, you know, games even. I do gaming, nostalgia time, if you've not watched any of those yet, because I still need to set up and do those again. <laughs> so yeah, I've got lots of things on my channel, including synthesizer stuff and keyboards, if you've recently done a lot on that. And of course electronics, as you can see. Well, I sort of started my channel off, well, I started my channel off with Minecraft, which I do hope to kind of like do a few videos, but extra ones with Minecraft. But uh, yeah, I went on to electronics earlier on in my channel, but I just do lots of things. I'm into so many, so much. So yeah, it just flits between one interest and another and another and another. So yeah, huge back catalog. Go check it out. <laughs> Because a few of you have been binge-watching and it's quite touching actually. Anyway, for now I will say adios! Thanks so much to all my patrons for supporting my channel. Especially to you very kind top-tier supporters of mine who deserve an extra special thanks. Rich Garbett, Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako and Chris Sebelinski. Have a lovely evening everyone! Until next time, adios!